heard bang, 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 bang. He just walked casually down the sidewalk with the gun in the hand. Good evening, everyone. Our Action News special coverage continues here at 6 o'clock on a, a terrible day in the western Pennsylvania community. A series of shootings in Allegheny and Beaver counties that have left five people dead and one person injured, and we are learning more at this hour. And the police at uh, Allegheny County Police are going to hold a news conference any moment now at Robinson Town Center where two people were killed. But first, while we are waiting for them to join them live, let's tell you what we know right now. There were five separate shootings. Mount Lebanon, Robinson Township, Center Township, Carnegie, and Scott Township late this afternoon. Again, five people now dead. Our Sheldon Ingram has been standing by at the scene where we had the worst loss of life, the Robinson Town Center, an Asian restaurant where two people are dead. Let's go to Sheldon now live for more coverage. Well, Scott, at this moment, we're waiting for police, uh, Allegheny County police, to come over to uh, brief us on the uh, details of the incident. What you're looking at now uh, are the county police officers, a couple of uh, county uh, staff people who are on their way over here momentarily to speak with reporters uh, to give us all the information regarding the shooting. Um, they're standing right in front of the Yafei Chinese restaurant. They just removed the two bodies from inside the restaurant within the past half hour. We know that one of the victims is 30-year-old. Tao Pham. He was a delivery man for Yafe and uh, it was his brother inside the restaurant uh, who told us, uh, gave us the identification of his brother at the time. We spoke with him a little earlier this afternoon and, and this is what he said during the interview. I, uh, in the kitchen, I cook it. Uh -huh. And uh, I, somebody go inside, told me, where, where the Joe? Out of my fan. Where, where the Joe? Uh, somebody outside, shoot outside. I just hear that. And I go outside, I see what happened. I just go outside, I see my brother on floor already. Now, as we know right now, based on that interview from Vin Trung, it's 30-year-old Tao yeah. Pham who was killed inside the restaurant along with the second person whose identity has not yet been released. But we're waiting for that information as well as other details to come from Allegheny County Police. There they are standing just over in the parking lot uh, preparing to come over. We were told about an hour ago that they would brief us promptly at 6 o'clock. Um, they're positioning themselves to get that information together and to deliver it to us as to uh, all that they have. Uh, gathered up to this hour. Um, they're making their way over here right now, uh, led by the county communications director, Margaret Feldman, uh, the head uh, people in the Allegheny County Homicide Department, um, as well as uh, Robinson Township police officers. Uh, so let's listen in right now on uh, this briefing uh, on the details they have here in the Yafe Chinese uh, cuisine. Paul Wolf, W-O-L-F. Okay, we have Paul Wolf that's going to do the interview. Paul Wolf with the county police. Go ahead, Paul. Acting superintendent. Acting superintendent. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, today, the county police were called uh, around 2 o'clock and began investigating a series of events that occurred in Mount Lebanon, in Scott Township, Carnegie, and Robinson Township, whereby an individual had fired shots, uh, had shot several people, and had escaped to Beaver County. He was subsequently arrested in Ambridge. Uh, it was later discovered that a body in uh, uh, Center Township, which is being investigated by the Center Township Police and the uh, Pennsylvania State Police. Uh, we began investigating uh, in Scott Township. We had a uh, shooting and swastikas painted on uh, a, a synagogue and also at a Jewish center in Carnegie. Uh, at an Indian grocery store in uh, Scott Township, there was two persons, uh, both males, uh, Indians uh, were found shot. Uh, they're both being treated in local hospitals. Uh, one is uh, in very poor condition at Allegheny General. The other one in serious condition at Mercy Hospital. There was also in Mount Lebanon uh, a fire. Uh, the officers went to the scene of the fire and uh, found a uh, woman shot 
Uh, officers are investigating there. Uh, up here at uh, Robinson Town Center, uh, we officers uh, found two persons, both Oriental, in the uh, restaurant. Uh, they were both shot and are deceased. Uh, investigation is continuing along several lines. Uh, one, the murder investigation, uh, and also the investigation of the shootings. Uh, it is believed that the suspect who is, uh, who, who is presently incarcerated in the uh, uh, jail in, in uh, Butler in Beaver County This right, is live coverage, yes, and, and sometimes live coverage things can happen. A cable can become disconnected. We're going to try and get back our connection to that police news conference at Robinson Town Center here very shortly as we're getting the first official account from police about exactly what happened, which does match pretty much what we've known about this sequence that has left five people dead, and that would be one point of information. I don't think even the police uh, at the scene had been given the word. He said that the man who had been shot at the Indian grocery who was in, as he said, very poor condition at Allegheny General Hospital, we did get confirmation in the last 15 minutes that that man has also died, a 30-year-old man. And this is a vast shooting spree for those of you just joining us. It started in Mount Lebanon, one dead in Mount Lebanon, two dead in Robinson Township, one dead in Center Township in Beaver County, and we have learned the fifth victim has died, and we believe that happened in Scott Township at the India Grocer. We're learning more about the uh, suspect in this case, 34-year-old uh, Richard Baumhammer is a man who, at least on the Internet, to people that he was communicating with, claimed to be an attorney of some kind uh, who may have lived... Uh, uh, on and off with his uh, f mother and father there in their uh, very nice Mount Lebanon uh, neighborhood. Uh, mm -hmm. But we've not, uh, we, we're, we've uh, asked our Paul Van Osdell from our uh, uh, Team 4 investigative unit to check in to see what more we can uh, learn about this person. And he joins us now. Paul. Scott, we really don't know a lot right now about Richard Baumhammers. All we know really is that he's an international attorney. He was working and living apparently up in Beaver County. He is the son of a prominent dentist in Pittsburgh, Andres Baumhammers, who is a native of Austria, who with Austria offices in Oakland and who lives in Mount Lebanon. Uh, Richard Baumhammers, we know, has lived in Atlanta, Sacramento, California, Kent, Ohio, and Birmingham, Alabama. And really, that is all we really know about him at this point. Uh, very limited information. We don't know about his criminal record, if he has one or not, but uh, we're certainly trying to find that information out. But you have confirmed he is an attorney. Yes, yes. And when you say he's worked in Beaver County, that might explain why he had gone from the location of Robinson Town Center out toward that center township area. Yeah, that could explain that, Scott. And, and again, he's, he was actually registered with the, uh, with the Bar Association down in Atlanta with, as an international attorney there. So that's one clue that we have is to the fact that this man has been of some prominence as an attorney in the past, and he has moved around quite a bit, though, so we don't know exactly how long he's been in the area and, and what his relationship is here to the area, other than through his father. I, un I understand. Well, we will continue uh, to, to check into his background. We, th we thank you from that. We do have, if you're uh, just joining us, kind of a little more information uh, geographically to kind of get you centered about what has happened here in an afternoon. Uh, our coverage has gone on here now uh, live for more than three hours as we've uh, seen the devastation on these uh, communities in Allegheny County and Beaver County. Uh, it all seemed to have started here in Mount Lebanon. And you see at the bottom of your screen, in the middle, Elm Spring, that being the first first location where we have a home uh, where fire uh, broke out. The fire crews came onto the scene and they not only found a fire, they found a body, the body of a woman in her 60s. And uh, that was the very first of the victims, the five uh, victims killed today. That's right, Scott. Then we're told that two people were shot dead at the Yaffe restaurant. That's in Robinson Township. Um, but before we do that, let's take you back to Elm Street where you said it all started. John Griner is live there. He's been covering that aspect. This all started there with a house fire and then a victim was found inside of that house, John. Let me set the scene for you, Michelle. It is the house that is sort of covered by the foliage. It's the third one in. You see the yellow tape there. The second house in is actually the Baumhammer house. That is where uh, apparently Richard's parents live. The doctor, as you mentioned, and his wife, and Richard was there on and off quite a bit. Uh, the woman was killed in the next house over. There's sort of a, a white post or a stake. It's the, uh, the house beyond that. And uh, the fire was... Uh, 
uh, we understand that she was shot. We, we've not confirmed that, but we understand the fire was set after that. And we've been talking with some folks here about uh, Mr. Bon, bomb hammer, uh, the younger bomb hammer. And uh, what we know is that uh, he chatted to a couple of neighbors online, a 21-year-old and a 15-year-old girl, and told them about his life, that he was an international attorney, that he would like to meet them, uh, what he liked, what he didn't like. They said he seemed like a nice guy, although they didn't meet him in person. Uh, coincidentally, or perhaps not so coincidentally, the two young women are Jewish, and the victim is Jewish, the uh, woman in her 60s, by all accounts, uh, a woman uh, uh, liked uh, very much here in the neighborhood and in the community and in her synagogue. And uh, right now, I have to tell you that the street is not exactly deserted, but people are, are going on with their daily lives, as certainly will happen in cases like this, so our efforts to find out a little bit more about the suspect are put on hold right now. We'll keep trying, and of course, we'll have more as the hour goes on. Scott and Michelle. John, uh, let me ask you just one question. You talked to the woman who uh, had been communicating to Richard Baumhammers online, and she said that at first she actually did think that he himself uh, was Jewish, and later that uh, she learned that he, he was not. Uh, do we know if maybe he was uh, perhaps of Jewish ethnicity just in, in background, but maybe not in religious practice? That's something I don't know. The only thing I know is what uh, she told us uh, when we did the interview. It said at first that uh, she thought he was Jewish, but she found out uh, that was not the case. And uh, other than that, Scott, I'm afraid I can't help you out. We're uh, trying to find out as much as we can about him. but. Uh, that has not been one of the things we've been able to confirm so far. I, I do appreciate that, uh, uh, John. What we did learn uh, from the one young woman when uh, John talked to her earlier was that uh, uh, she herself was startled because she is a part of that congregation where the suspect uh, had gone on and then painted those swastikas. Let's go back now live to Robinson Town Center. We've just reestablished our connection to the uh, news conference there. victim in uh, Mount Lebanon is, is white. Uh, the two victims in Scott Township are Indian, and the two victims here are Oriental, and the one victim in, uh, in Beaver County is black, I believe. Do you have a criminal record? Uh, we have no information on a criminal record. Oh, which synagogue were the swastikas? Uh, this Bethel Congregation. The Not that I know of. The windows shot out of the Bethel? Yes. Had, had there been any kind of uh, domestic call or anything else uh, for this issue oh. this gentleman earlier in the day or, or earlier this week? I don't believe so. I don't want to draw any bad conclusions here, but Ron Taylor set his apartment on fire before he went on a shooting spree in Wilkinsburg. At this point, do you have any reason to believe that there's a connection? Sheldon. Fire somewhere. What happened in Wilkinsburg? No. There's, there's no connection between, between the two. Anything else? The FBI. The FBI is involved. The FBI here. Pardon me? The FBI here. They talk. I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that the FBI will talk to you. Sure. Will you talk to them? Okay. Your name? Jeff Killeen. Sorry, your name, sir? Jeff Killeen. Jeff Killeen. Correct. It's K-I-L-L-E-E-N. And you're in the Pittsburgh FBI office? That's correct. Okay. Does this look like a crime? Is that why the FBI is... Right now, the FBI is looking into uh, this entire event to determine whether or not anyone's civil rights have been violated. Uh, right, off the, uh, right off the bat, we have two houses of worship that were uh, seemingly attacked, and uh, this may impact on federal civil rights laws. So you don't term it as hate crime, but a violation of civil rights? At this time, we're looking at it as a civil rights crime, uh, or a potential civil rights crime. What about the others involved, though? They were all involved. Really, it's in the infancy of any investigation right now. We are deploying agents uh, to many of the scenes where the violence occurred. Uh, we're trying to do all the background we can. We're trying to get our investigative feet on the ground, so to speak. Agent, will you be back at the, uh, this, the press conference this evening? There will be a representative of the FBI at the conference. That's going to be a Jeff, I want to, sorry, I want to ask you again, because uh, we were kind of turned away from you before. Um, are, are you considering this to be a, a, a racially based crime at this point, and, and what are you using as, as the basis? Right now, we're at the we're at the very infancy of this event as far as an investigation is concerned. We're deploying resources. We have considerable resources developed. Uh, so far and devoted to this investigation. 
uh, the investigation is, is obviously going to take some time. Uh, right now, we're looking strictly uh, at this point in time to determine whether or not someone's civil rights were violated. And uh, that is the federal jurisdictional nexus at this time. Just All to be the victims are minorities, so it's a, uh, one could not make an easy assumption that they are victims of a hate crime. Can, can you comment on that? The, the jurisdiction of the FBI is limited. Uh, just because uh, someone may term a, an event a hate crime does not necessarily mean it will fall into a jurisdictional uh, statute that the FBI investigates. Uh, again, we're at the very infancy of this. We're looking at all possible angles. We're deploying considerable resources, and we're, of course, uh, uh, conducting this investigation with a number of other law enforcement agencies to include county police, local police, and I believe state police as well. Are there additional charges? You say civil rights violations and then hate crimes. Are they separate charges? Right now, there's, uh, we're, we're looking at a civil rights statute uh, or a number of civil rights statutes that may be impacted by, by this event. So that's where we are right now is on the civil rights angle. Are you just looking at the civil rights angle as far as the synagogues go? Uh, right now, we're again, this is in its infancy, and we're looking at every investigative angle uh, to determine whether or not we have jurisdiction, and then from there we'll go forward to uh, conduct a, any logical investigation that needs to be done. Has the suspect said anything to police yet? Uh, no, the suspect has not uh, wished to talk with the police. What is the... Uh do you know anything about the suspects? Demeanor? All right, we are learning uh, more about the uh, crimes that have occurred uh, in our community this afternoon. The five people uh, killed, one person wounded, and this news conference continues. Our Sheldon Ingram will continue to monitor it, and he's going to summarize for us in just a moment. But uh, as we finished hearing from uh, Jeff Kalina, the FBI, about the uh, racial ramifications, mm -hmm. the hate crime ramifications, this is a good point to turn to the next part of our coverage. That's right. For those of you just joining us, five people dead, and here is their uh, descent. Jewish descent, Indian descent, Oriental descent, and African. American, and that's why we are focusing on a possible hate crime motive. For more on that, let's turn now to Nina Pineda live in the studio. Nina. Michelle, as we could just see from Jeff Colleen there, they are very hesitant to characterize this as a hate crime. He did say with the FBI they have to gather certain evidence to be able to prove that. They have to determine if a federal statute has been violated because hate crimes and terroristic acts are outlawed. The suspect could be facing a whole host of other violations. And Clean did say that it's very rare that a place of worship is desecrated, much less shot at. He said it's the worst case he's seen in this area of temples being targeted. targeted. They are looking at vandalism relating to ethnic defamation and intimidation because the swastika is painted on the temple walls there. Also, the ethnicity of the other victims who were targeted, the Asian victims at the restaurant and the karate school. We did speak tonight with the rabbi of Temple Bethel in Scott Township, and despite the front door of that temple being shattered, they are having services this evening for Jewish Shabbat, which begins any moment now at sundown. He told the congregation tonight to please be vigilant like Jews in earlier times, to go on in their way in the face of this hatred and renew their commitment to their distinctive traditions and take pride in their identity. He has also said, Michelle and Scott, that he's never heard any complaints uh, any sort of antagonistic behavior towards anyone in that community before this incident. And FBI agents are probably in the process right now of obtaining a search warrant for that suspect's home because what they have to do is they have to go into that home and we talked to experts, this is what they'll have to prove. They'll have to look for literature, books, magazines, videos, anything that deals with something being discriminatory in nature relating to a hatred of people based on their religion, their race, or their ethnic background. That seems to be what's going to be important to prove if they're going to characterize this as a hate crime. It seems on the face of this that the shootings were not random, the people being of Jewish descent, the people being of... Indian and Asian descent, but they are going to have to prove that, and it looks like specific types of people were targeted, but we'll have to wait and see, as Jeff Clean said in that news conference that Sheldon was covering, if they'll say if this is a hate crime or not. Back to you. All right, Nina, thank you very much. And as Nina said, they are trying to obtain a search warrant right now to search the suspect's home. He is 34-year-old Richard Baumhammers. And for the latest on him, let's turn now to Sally Wiggin. She's live in the newsroom. Sally, you have new information for us. That's right, Michelle. We're trying to get a picture of this gentleman who is the suspect. We do know, as you have already said, he was an international attorney, but it seems he specialized in import-export law 
and in, ironically, immigration law. Son of a dentist, Andres Baumhammers of Mount Lebanon, and as, as John Greiner has reported, the uh, home, the address that we've been giving seems to be that of his parents. Also, the suspect lived in Atlanta, Sacramento, Kent, Ohio, and Birmingham, Alabama, so quite a number of places um, in, in his adult life. Also, probably, we, we seem to think, no, actually the report is, let's say this, of Latvian ancestry, but there has been another report that his family is from Austria, so we're going to try and sort that out. I've been talking to some of the neighbors on the phone, and there is another report, unconfirmed, please let me underscore that, an unconfirmed report that there may have been a connection between bomb hammers and the family of the victim found on Elm Spring Road. We have not confirmed that. It, it's coming from neighbors who are in shock over this and, and trying to figure out why he would have gone to that home, and uh, allegedly. So right now, that's the information we have on the suspect in custody. Scott, Michelle? All right, All right, Sally Wigan, we, we do appreciate that as we're learning more about uh, Richard Baumhammers, the suspect who we did learn in the police news conference at Robinson Town Center. It was a kind of a quiet question, and he answered it very briefly. So maybe if you didn't hear it, they were, Sheldon asked, has he said anything to police? And we heard from them, he doesn't want to say anything to police, and he himself is an, is an attorney. So uh, we're not getting very much from the suspect himself. And Sally talked about where this whole thing started on Elm Spring Road in Mount Lebanon. A little while later, there was an incident at Scott Township at the India Grocer or Susan Copen is on the scene there and she's got information for us. Um, we know that there were how many victims shot at this India grocer, Susan? There were two people who were shot inside the Indian grocery store. Um, we understand it was a customer and also the brother-in-law of the owner. And I am joined now by Kishar Perkarna, who is a friend of the family that owns that grocery store. And you said you were just devastated by this news. Yes, I'm surprised and shocked uh, with this news and amazing that this happened to our community. Basically, our Indian people are nonviolent. We believe in peace, and we never believe in conflict or fight with anybody, especially when you are in foreign country. We have to be very careful when you deal with people. And our community as such, we are involved in so many social activities and try to help people. And this happened to our community, our person. It's very sad news. The owner of the shop is Vijay Patel. Did he or his family have any enemies, any reason why someone would walk directly into his shop and open fire? I don't think so. They're very polite people, very religious people, and I know them personally, so I don't think so. They will argue or fight, have any conflicts with anybody. I'm very surprised and shocked with this news. Okay, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Um, once again, in uh, the ta Scott Town Center, uh, two people were shot inside an Indian grocery store. And what we have heard from witnesses, the man, the shooter in this case, pulled up in his Jeep and got out of his car and walked directly into this Indian grocery store and opened fire. Approximately five to six shots, walked out and drove away. Back to you in the studio. All right, Susan, thank you there from the India grocery location. And of course, what we do know about the victims there, uh, both uh, were taken to Pittsburgh hospitals, one flown to Allegheny General, one taken to Mercy Hospital, and then the sad news that uh, one of those uh, men shot at that India grocery has since died, he becoming the fifth, fifth victim. victim killed. And uh, Mike Clark joins us now live, and he has some comments from the Anti-Defamation League. And um, one thing specifically to talk about are these shootings at the synagogues. Nobody injured at either synagogue. One was vacant, one in um, Scott Township. But uh, swastikas painted on the glass doors and then shot out. At least two swastikas found on Temple Bethel. And the ADL has this comment uh, tonight uh, from Cleveland. Once again, they say hatred and violence have reared their ugly heads in the Pittsburgh area. The ADL raises its voice tonight to condemn the hatred and violence in any form. Violence when the manifestation of hate is particularly devastating to all of us in each of our communities. Although today's facts, if today's shootings are still being established, the suspect, Richard Baumhammers, has been described as being cool and calm by at least one eyewitness. People who are so eaten by hate that they are driven to shoot at synagogues and kill people based on ethnicity and race destroy the fabric of our society. Earlier today, we talked to Joel Ratner live on our air from the ADL here in Pittsburgh. He says that we condemn the violent attacks on our synagogues and murders of innocent people. Violence based on hatred must stop and people must learn to live with one another. Our communities need to be nurtured and not to be torn apart. Our condolences go out to the families of those killed. You are looking at the pictures right now of Temple Bethel. 
The synagogue walls and windows will be repaired, and the fear that those shootings have endangered will be soothed, Ratner says. But the deaths cannot be undone, and the hate that fueled them will only escalate into more hate. There is a four-letter word which can be used to fight hate. He says that word is stop. So that is the reaction tonight from the Anti-Defamation League uh, throughout the country. We are uh, gathering more information and uh, talking to uh, Rabbi Scheinlin at Temple Bethel tonight. We'll have more, of course, uh, on this tonight. All right, Mike, thanks. And, of course, the thing that we learned from Sally Wigan there that was so disturbing on top of, uh, of all of this is that he was not only a man uh, who claimed to be an attorney, but an attorney who specialized in immigration law, mm -hmm. someone who lived in, in communities all across this country, Atlanta, uh, Sacramento, and then back here and may have had been working out of Beaver County. Again, we five dead, and uh, the, when you talk about hate crimes, this is one reason that we're looking toward a hate crime. Here are the victims. One is of Jewish descent. Indian descent, Asian descent, and American descent. Five dead. Sheldon Ingram is standing by live. He has been following that police news conference at Robinson Town Center. And uh, Sheldon, maybe you can kind of uh, sort through all of the information and kind of give us the summary of the most important points here. Yes, yeah, Scott, we heard from uh, both the uh, county police as well as the FBI. First of all, starting with the county police and surmising what they said to us is, first of all, that the uh, suspect that they arrested has absolutely nothing to say. And they, they do have an inkling or they believe that this might be a hate crime. Uh, they say that all of the people are of a certain ethnic background. You're talking about the people shot inside the places of worship, the two people here shot and killed outside of the uh, Oriental restaurant. They all. The FBI said that, that uh, they'll be investigating this um, to see if uh, individual civil rights have been violated. Now, the FBI is staying away from that phrase, hate crime, if you will. Uh, that's a term that's been used throughout the afternoon, but the FBI is uh, looking at civil rights violation that may have been violated, um, the victims' uh, rights being violated, and under that statute of civil rights violations would come a measure um, that addresses the hate crime issue. But the FBI is staying away from that term uh, as, as we know it. Uh, the county police did confirm for us that there are two people dead uh, who were shot and killed inside of the restaurant behind me. Both of them are Asian. Uh, one we know is a delivery man who is uh, working for the restaurant. The other person, uh, we still have not yet gotten his identity. Now, county police also told us that they will brief us again between the hour of 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock tonight to have more details. Um, they pretty much outlined the, uh, the pathway of the gunman throughout the afternoon from the first incident to the last and, and where they caught up to him. But right now they do not have an official motive only based on what they've seen, based on the SWAT stickers and based on the victims who were gunned down that they can uh, try to follow this as a hate crime. But officially police are not uh, releasing that as their official motive just yet. Back to you in the studio. And Sheldon, I wanted to ask you too, we know the suspect is in custody, 34-year-old Richard Baumhammers. He said nothing to police so far that you know of? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah, I, I wondered about the suspect, 34-year-old Richard Baumhammers. He said nothing to police? Yeah, you're right, Michelle. Um, we, we asked that question about two or three times uh, of county detectives. They said that he has said absolutely nothing to police. In fact, the quote from one of the uh, detectives is that he does not want to speak to police. All right, Sheldon Ingram reporting live from Robinson Town Center. Thanks very much, Sheldon. And I guess that the uh, the thing that we uh, is so disturbing about this and, and all of this is that as it comes at the end of the Easter season, the end of the week of Passover, and today as uh, Orthodox Easter begins at a time when all of these communities are, are looking to think about renewal and peace. And even now, uh, 25 years after the war in Vietnam, about our, our connection to uh, to uh, Asian countries and uh, and this country as a point uh, of, uh, of a melting pot, that a young attorney, an attorney who specializes in immigration, uh, might be now suspect in charge with such a series of violent and devastating crimes. Five dead stretching from Mount Lebanon to Center Township in Beaver County. We did just get word that the Center for Victims of Violent Crime is open 24 hours for anyone who needs help dealing with this. Live coverage covers throughout the evening. We'll break in with bulletins. Join us again throughout the evening. On World News tonight, this Friday, the political current